Now we're going to focus on the aspect of no-tech assistive technologies. And here I would like you to just give us one example of no-tech and then move uh, really to the high-tech uh, possibilities as well uh, for our students. Are you talking now about communication aids, yes, Edwina? Yes. Okay, yeah, that's a, a real big area. And we all, we teachers know how important communication is. Not only that a pupil can express her himself, but also that he or she understands or can process what we are talking about. Um, as soon as a child has reached the stage to understand that something can be replaced by another thing, which means it has reached the stage of symbolization, huh? that a word can be replaced by a picture, um, that I can draw a tree and the child recognizes, okay, that's a tree. Typically with children with typical development, they reach this stage around eight to 12 months. Um, that's when picture books become important. Yeah? They recognize, okay, there's a cat and it's, um, it's like just like our cat. And even if the cat's not exactly like the cat at home, the child would still recognize the, the concept of a cat. And as soon as a child has reached this communicative level, um, we can do so many things to help the child communicate. We can use photographs, pictures, I've spent years and years of using cutouts from brochures or catalogs simply because back then all those neat computer programs were not along. Um, we could use standardized symbolized versions like the picture communication symbols by Mayer Johnson, the stick symbols, the Metacom symbols by Annette Kitzinger, um, the Bliss symbols by Charles Bliss. Um, and. Uh, Many of these children never reach the stage of being able to read or write standardized orthography. Yet, if some of those children were living in old Egypt and where you would use hieroglyphs, those children would be able to perfectly read or write. Because as soon as a writing is um, represented in a picture or a drawing, it's processed mainly in the right hemisphere of the brain. Um, and with our children who cannot speak, uh, typically the left hemisphere of the brain is affected because that's where um, almost 100% of all persons process language and speaking. Um, now, if we have to replace spoken language speech by any type of communication system, as Edwina said before, no tech to high tech, we are talking about ASC, augmentative or alternative and or alternative communication is the English and the internationally used term. Objects can be used for augmentative communication. Um, if a child has problems um, with two dimensional pictures, um, photographs, for example, this pen could be my presentation for I want to write or I want to draw. Or a glass could represent I'm thirsty, I want something to drink. Now here it's important that this glass would only be used for my, me expressing I want something to drink and not the glass I'm actually drinking then. It has to remain a symbol. Then it, otherwise it wouldn't reach the stage of being used for communication. Now that would be rather impractical to always carry around all the stuff that's within our environment. So what we do is we use um, parts that stand for the whole. For example, if a child loves to eat yogurt, instead of carrying around a cup of yogurt the whole time, you would, for example, just use the lid of the yogurt. Yeah? And the child learns that on pointing to this lid, we will understand she or he wants to eat some yogurt. Or all types of communication boards, they don't, do not need digitalization at all. You would have um, a stable board, either 
uh, one fold or you can fold it up to several parts and you have your photographs there, your picture symbols of all the things that you want to express. And again, with this link, you see example and you find many of those in the internet. Um, Annette Kitzinger is a German lady and her daughter herself has cerebral palsy and she designed the so-called Metacom symbols. The name of her daughter who is not speaking is Meta. So that's why her symbols are called Metacom symbols. And you can use them in no tech communication books, but she also has a real neat communication program, um, for example, for computers or tablet computers um, with voice output. That's the big advantage of those no tech communication aids. What could be an advantage of a no-tech communication aid in our times of digitalization? Well, I've had so many parents, when they go for holidays, they do not take along the high-tech device of the child, but they do bring the communication book. As a backup, my pupils always had a no-tech communication board or book as well, and not just the high-tech aid. Um, those must not get wet, they must not get too hot if it's in the sun. Yeah? And we do not leave our mouth at home when we go for holidays, do we? So communication should not be separated to just those very safe areas where nothing can happen to the device. So it's always good to have a no tech communication aid as well. But the more severe disabled a person is and the bigger the problems are for the person, for example, to exactly point to a, a symbol or a picture on a communication board, the more it gets a, a riddle, yeah, a guessing game. What do you mean? Do you mean this or that? And also with a no tech communication book, it's fine for communicating with a communication partner that's face to face to you. But when I want to address a bigger audience, I just um, need something with a voice output. And here we have uh, the possibility of doing it um, in a low tech or in a high tech form. Typically low tech aids would be some they are produced, for example, by the firm Ablenet, a Big Mac, and it's important to spell them with a CK and not just with like um, from, you know, the, um, the restaurant chain. So the Big Mac looks like one of, one of those uh, burgers, but it's a big switch and it, al it allows recording any type of phrases, utterances, songs, messages. Yeah, those is a, this is a real neat aid for a child who is, has quite a profound disability. The step-by-step -step, um, is again a switch, but here you can record messages in a sequence, which is really neat if a child, for example, wants to talk about his weekend or about the holidays, or it can join in in songs and being responsible for the refrain, or even um, um, tell, joke, tell jokes or ask riddles, guessing games with his peers. The super, uh, super talker would be an example for a communication aid that is low tech, meaning it only plays back what has been recorded before. It practically works like a recorder. You have now with this device a choice from one, two, four or eight squares. You put your finger on one of those squares, hit a button and record your message and then it's recorded. And whenever the child hits the, the corresponding field, the message is spoken that was recorded before. The GoTalk is a device um, that comes either with just one field or up to 32 fields, depending on the motor abilities of the user. Um, and another low-tech device would be a so-called any book reader. It's like a mobile communication aid. It's a rather easy to hold pen and you can record things and that, that can be activated whenever the, the child moves the pen to some objects. And I can uh, either use barcodes or I can use picture symbols that e even come with the device. Um, 
Examples of high-tech assistive technology to use for communication would be, for example, the Toby. And Toby is owned by Dynavox and is opera can be operated via iGaze. And then there's a whole range of communication apps of different other cognitive levels. For example, the GoTalk Now would be the digitalized version of the GoTalk I was talking to you before, that one that comes from 1 to 32 squares. Now the app gives you a whole range of possibilities. You can include videos, you can include sounds, and you can put hotspots in it, which would mean if the child activates, for example, the picture of his dog, then you can put into, um, you can link it to another page screen that tells you everything about this dog. And again, on this video, you that where I included you the link, you'll see children of different communicative capacities, capacities, and you see what types of communication aids they use. It's in German, but it's not so impossible to understand every word, but it gives you an idea of the different type of communication aids the children are using. Yes, you will find a lot of videos, a lot of links uh, in different languages, but this is part of this project, the Dig In uh, project, and Gonda is giving you always an, an specific example.